So at the start of 2003, I was an active PE teacher, enjoying my life. Unfortunately for me, I uh, had a motorcycle accident. It knocked me off the bike and threw me straight into the path of the oncoming traffic and paralysed me immediately. I was never going to have any enjoyment in my life, and certainly that I, I wouldn't be riding a motorcycle. It was something that then made me think about what could I do next. Soon enough I was out riding amongst able-bodied motorcyclists and being treated the same as just any other biker that was out there. For me, it was a great feeling of independence and freedom. I didn't realise just how, how much the accident was going to affect my confidence. It was far, far deeper than I'd previously imagined. Being a fairly competitive sort of person, I then decided that I wanted to take motorcycling to the next level. I wanted to get into motorcycle racing, to compete against able-bodied motorcyclists. This hadn't been done in the UK before, so we decided to form a race team made up of paraplegic motorcyclists and go over to Holland uh, to a racetrack called Assen and compete against able-bodied motorcyclists in a three-hour endurance race. A lot of people thought we, we'd we lost our minds, that uh, it was never going to happen, that we'd never get there and that we'd never actually do any good. Um, but we seem to have proved them wrong. We've got there. We've tried twice, but both times we've, uh, we've come across mechanical failures, uh, to put it politely. Uh, this year, unfortunately, I crashed. So our plan is to, to regather our thoughts and go back with a, a renewed vigour. maybe wait another few corners, it'd be like, no, it'd be alright for me to go around the outside of him and squeeze onto that little bit of tarmac, <laughs> which I know will be between him and the grass, or there is a gap between the two bikes, that would be fun. Yeah. It's just fantastic, it really is. I mean, this was the place where I first got back on a motorbike, and two of the instructors here helped me. Uh, we developed the sort of the whole launching system to be caught and launched by two people. And so it's wonderful to be back here with sort of the family that helped me to get back on a bike and, and encouraged me uh, to, to pursue the dream to become a racer. So it, it's incredibly special. Are you okay here? Yeah. Is she launching with me, is she? Tell you what, I'll ask Simon. Okay. He doesn't mind doing yeah. it. Okay. Okay. It's the bracing of my using this part of my 
bar yeah. against the bar is the most ergonomical way of doing yeah. it. If I try and brace like that, then the wrist... Yeah. Next time you get on the bike, I'll have a little look at the position you're I think I have to adapt to it, to yeah. my riding style, and I think I've just got to learn that with certain corner, I'm going to have to be using the left arm yeah. a little bit more to push and pull and do the counter steering whilst I then readdress the throttle so I can wind it on. You almost and need even quicker action throttle. Yes, I, need, yeah. I, need, I basically need it on and off. I just need a button <laughs> on off because you can't see both sides of my feet to see whether or not I've bounced. But if I look like I'm... If I saw you looking unsafe, I'd probably tell them after it's getting to black flag. Yeah, yeah. Because it is, it's so bumpy and I'm like... Yeah. And I, don't, I can't look to check. No, sure. It's a three-hour endurance race, 20 minutes left to go, I'm the last rider, all I've got to do is bring the bike home. Went into the first corner, changed down, tipped in, hit the apex, got on the gas and unfortunately the back tyre let go. Started to slide sideways, then both tyres gripped and high-sided. The Velcro straps that we were using to keep my legs in place were different from the ones that we've used in the past and unfortunately they they didn't allow me to part company with the bike so at a, between i would say 90 and 100 mile an hour the bike starts to flip and bounce down the track with me attached to it the end result is that i shattered both my legs i broke my pelvis uh, broke the knee plateau and shattered the left foot um, initial Initial thoughts from the consultants were that they were going to actually amputate my left leg. Uh, fortunately, they haven't done. Um, if I'd been able-bodied, they probably would have taken the leg off because they said that they weren't able to reconstruct a, a walkable ankle. So um, because I'm paralysed and I'm not going to use it to walk about, they basically put an external fixator on it. They operated on the right femur. They cut the leg open, stuck in a 10-inch plate and then bolted it to the bone to try and allow that to, to grow back together. Uh, it's three months down the line and both my right leg is still broken and my left leg is still broken. Uh, the bones are taking a very long time to heal so it's been a, it's been a bad, bad end to the year for me. The 700 pre injection, right? Because I've had a whale of a time overtaking people and becoming a far more aggressive about overtaking and not doing Can't the whole more. please after you. I've gone, oh, look, there is this much track, I'm going to have it, and I'm going to put myself right over where the wheels might be on the tarmac, but I might be leaning on the grass. Right. And so it's given me a massive confidence boost. I'm enjoying it. The more you enjoy it, the more confident you feel. The more confident you feel, the more you enjoy it. I mean, into the chicane, I'm literally stood on the back brake and I'm yeah. as hard as I can. Can the fucking hands jump in and jump in and stop your best, stop your best? If you cannot brake any harder. Yeah. I tend to go inside here. Stay, stay on the outside. I want to see if anyone left, crashes. The, the inside of it. The trouble is, if people crash, they all fire off across. And I've seen it twice at Quarry right. where somebody on the inside has crashed and skittled all the way across. Yeah, it took a lot of people out. And, took, take, and so I, I'm like, I'll go to the very edge. I don't mind. So it's a tough one. Um, I didn't tell my mum and dad that I was going to get back on a bike because I knew they were going to be they were going to be very upset. The family is very important. Mum and dad's only <coughs> only son, and I knew they weren't going to be happy about me getting back on a bike because of the injuries that were that I sustained from being on one in the first place. Most of my friends think I'm a little bit mad to do it. Some of my close friends think that I really shouldn't be doing it because it's uh, it's put them through a lot of heartache and a lot of pain. But I try and show them the the positive sides of riding a bike. The 
enjoyment, the happiness, the freedom, the independence that I get from riding it. It makes me feel alive. Most of them have come around. There's still one or two that are still a little bit upset about the fact that I'm doing it, but on the whole, they've, they've come around to it. But I was trying, I was trying earplugs, and I have to listen to the engine noise. I've got to bring the clutch back in and change gear. So start, the first gear is really difficult because you're feeding the clutch out in first gear, then you basically hit first gear just for a short period of time. Yeah. But the clutch out before you've got to pull the clutch back in and hit the button. You're starting in second. Uh, yeah, that didn't work very well. Oh, okay. I've got to get up to speed quickly because the longer you stay behind all the slower riders, oh, yeah. the further ahead the person at the front gets. And you can lose 30 seconds in the first lap to the lead rider. And then from then on, I'm only six seconds slower. I, I think it's fantastic for my father to be here. To, to see me race, to, to see what I can do. Um, I would love for my mum to come, but she, she can't cope with it. She, find it. she finds it too distressing. I could injure myself yet again, because I've injured myself very severely twice on a motorbike. You know, once, that was the one that put me in the wheelchair, and then the second one in August where I, you know, I very nearly lost my life uh, with, the, with that accident. So she, she gets a lot of satisfaction from knowing that I'm doing something that I really love to do. On the final lap, they'll, they'll lap you before you get to do your final lap sort of thing, and then, then it just messes everything up. So She thinks that what I do helps to inspire others, so she's proud of what I am doing, but she does worry for me and probably rightly so, because motorcycling can be dangerous, as I've found out to my cost. That's where the whole target fixation comes from. If you look at where, you're, where you don't want it to go, yeah. you're going to hit that, that's yeah, guaranteed. That's, that's just thinking so, about yeah. that. Don't look yeah. at the cones, look between the cones. Oh, the same. 30 minutes. Yeah, 30 minutes down there and 20. 20 minutes down there. Yeah, no problem. Difficult season trying to come back from a quite bad injury that I had in August. Yeah. So August last year, a high side of the acid. Went into turn one and uh, hit false neutral. Halfway through the turn, the clutch really Dropped it in. Bang, over I went. But the strapping system we were using to keep me on the bike was different from what we use now. Right. So when the bike high sided and somersaulted, I didn't come away from the bike. I was still attached still strapped to, to the back. So, yeah. I didn't think it would be so bad coming back on a bike because I've been paralysed and come back. Com Confidence thing. You, you have big offs that... Uh, this is, yeah, this is my skate for in Luna, and that's been... It's been tough, you know. And you, it's never so right, is it? You know, it's you for me, know. it's in the back of my mind. It's like, well, wow. Not so much, am I going to spin the back up because it's only a little 650 and it's yeah. only got 72 point horsepower. But what happens if I hit another false neutral going into a corner? Whereas before, it was very much... Oh, no, I'm <laughs> I don't want to ruin your race, and now it's the case of, uh, well, you've left the door open, and now I'm going to go and You know when you, when, you had your, you, when you had your bump then, your second bump, you don't, you wouldn't, you don't, you don't feel it anymore. I looked down and I could see the right leg here, and it just went off at 90 degrees, and I thought, oh, that's not going to be good either. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Well, they just plate it all up. Yeah, so it, and they, then... they, put, they put a metal rod from there all the way up to here, yeah. with about a dozen screws, up the North Hotty that goes all the way down the back of the leg and under the foot, to stop the foot from flexing forward because the bones at the, the bones at the bottom, the fib and tip, they're just, they're still smashed. Yeah. So I do low intensity pulse ultrasound every night, you get a little portable machine. Yeah. So if you ever suffer a, a long bone fracture, you can get it on the NHS. Yeah. So I tried the laser treatment with uh, Brian yeah. Simpson. Um, but you've been there. Uh, we've all been there. <laughs> yeah. uh, and the pulse magnetic ultrasound, the pulse ma the magnetic, magnetic stuff, one, yeah. and then the ultrasound, and then I've also done the hyperbaric. Well, I'd like to do the last couple of BSB rounds if this, this wrist comes strong again. Yeah. I need to ride more and be a bit more bike fit, you know. Yeah. BSB super stock's insane. Yeah. It's just tense and tense. Once tense I get to a certain level, I'm sure that I would want to be using the back brake, but lots of people I've spoken to say just run. Well, if you don't touch it, yeah. that one. Just the wheelie, not for going into the vent. Yeah. Uh, That's the heaviest throttle I ever felt ever in my really? life. I yeah. can only change direction by pulling and pushing yeah. on the bars. So if I have a really light throttle, then I'm pushing and pulling the bars. So in order to start and stop, I'll, have, I'll get on the bike whilst I'm paddock stand. Yeah, at least I can leave it. 
I but I only like to break. Yeah. Just a little bit. You know, having not come away from the bike before, I really don't want to do that again. Hey, plenty, boy. Um, Good to see. We'll get there. Yeah. Keep plugging away. Time. Enjoy it. That's what it's all about. Isn't it? Yeah. That's it. Live the dream, eh? It puts a smile on my face. For real. I think I'm now becoming a racer. Having to start at the back of the grid where I did, where you had the mini twins, one to to nineteen, and then you had the the next class, the, the street stock five hundred, from twenty to forty four, starting in on the forty fifth grid position, and so I was going to have to fight my way through because you can lose so much in the first lap. So if I wasn't aggressive and I didn't take my chances when they were presented to me, it would have taken me all the race to get past the slow riders whereas you know in one of the races I managed to get past 13 in the first lap come the second lap I'd overtaken another seven so you know it, it, I can very quickly move up the field now that I am taking the opportunity when it presents itself if there's a gap now I'm gonna go for it before I would have held back and I was thought well you know I'm, I'm still a bit new to racing I'm going to wait until it's a bit safer whereas now you know I've been right up alongside another rider they've kept their line but I've managed to squeeze between the one foot of track that they left between themselves and the and the grass I'm happy to go there now whereas before I never would so maybe it's just a place that has just spurred me on but I think it's taken my riding to another level Why did, I, why did I want to race? You get fed up of people telling you what you can't do. And people told me that it was never going to happen, that it was something that was impossible. Racing about competing. Motorsport offers you something that is really unique in, in the world of sport, in the fact that able-bodied and disabled can compete against each other on relatively equal terms. I can get on a motorbike and I can compete against someone who's able-bodied and there shouldn't be any real difference apart from our own levels of skill. Anybody can go anywhere to do anything, to be anyone. Enjoying the racing, you know, obviously you still have to take it seriously and you don't just go out for a giggle, but it's enjoying being a racer rather than just trying to analyze everything. So we've made great stride by me uh, relaxing uh, and by me being calmer, the team is calmer and, and we've got used to how we all work and sort of now I can get into leathers, get on the bike and sort of effectively be launched off the back of the group without anyone having to say anything because we know what we need to do, and, and that's a fantastic thing as well. And hopefully it helps to change everyone's perception of what's possible and what, you know, what isn't, uh, so that they can see if someone has uh, the desire inside them, they can go off and achieve absolutely anything they want to. And it's not just somebody in a wheelchair, but anybody, anybody at all has that inside them, has that energy, has the power to go off and do incredible things. You know, if they believe in it, and I believe that I wanted to become a racer, you know, I, I really wanted to make it happen. And I was fortunate enough to, to have other people support me in order to allow it to happen.
Tenth place. Here we go. Oh, Everybody up to and including the grid girl, you know, we are uh, we are trying to become a professional unit, but also maintaining the pure enjoyment of racing. So we can be professional, but we can also have a great time doing it. I was presented with this fine trophy, uh, and it is the North Gloucester Road Racing performance of the meeting, so it's over the entire weekend. So I've often been asked why, why, why motorbikes? Why, why, am I getting, why have I got back on a motorbike? And it's, you know, it, it can be difficult to answer, but I think the real reason is that it gives me freedom. It gives me independence and, and it returns something to me that I thought had been taken away and that is choice. Um, so many people who get injured, who have life-changing injuries, they have that choice taken away from them and for me it's my choice to get back on a bike and I'm glad that I have because it's shown to me that actually anything is possible if you set your mind to it. You know, these things that you you've treasure, these things that you're passionate about don't need to stop. You can carry on doing exactly what you want to do, even though there's people telling you that you can't do it, or you think that your, phys your physical limitations won't allow you to, because there is always a way around it. There is always something you can do. There is always an adaption you can use to allow you to have that passion, that freedom, that excitement, you know, the enjoyment. You know, it doesn't need to stop. You know, life doesn't need to stop. Life can be enriched, it can be fulfilling, it can be enjoyable. There are so many opportunities and you can just choose to, to do anything that you really want to. And I suppose that's why I get back on a bike because it is my choice, my choice to carry on with the, the passion that I had before the injury. Um, so that I'm just, I'm still me. I'm still living my life and enjoying it.
I'm Steve Jones. Uh, I'm Talon's second rider next year for the Talon Racing. Um, yeah.